Hey everyone, we are in Depot Bay, Oregon, and the waves are massive out in the bay. So we took a little family walk down to the harbor. It's insanely calm down here compared to what's out in the bay. So this was a nice little reprieve from the wind and the waves. CrossFit for real life. surreal how big and crazy the waves are out there and then just in this little harbor it's completely calm <laughs> to let you know Jesse has been working on a documentary for school and we decided to turn it into one of our own documentaries so we have been working on this for quite some time but before it's released later on here is a little sneak peek what do you have to say Tucker <laughs> The beach fills my soul. Water washes away my problems. This is my happy place. I read this article years back and it, it made me think. It, it made me really stop and think. The, the article I found was about dying people's regrets. The number one regret was people were saying they wished they had had the courage to live a life true to themselves, not the life that others expected of them. Health brings a freedom very few realize until they no longer have it. If you were to ask me 10 years ago if I'd be here now, I'd call you crazy. This, what we're doing, this is what rich or crazy people do. At least that's what I used to think. <laughs> We're in Oregon! My name is Jenny Ingram. This freedom is new. My old life was much different. As a kid, I think I had a pretty normal childhood, although I think my family traveled a bit more than others. I definitely thought life as an adult would be more fun. <laughs> it was far more stressful than I thought it would be when I was a kid. I chose to become a teacher, and it wasn't until later in high school that I finally decided on that. Um, I think it was just sort of an easy choice because it came naturally to me. I enjoyed kids. I loved, I loved the teaching part of it and I wanted to see, I wanted to be the one to help kids do well.
I met Jesse in July of 2012. It was July 4th, actually. And I think what drew me to Jesse the most, he was passionate about surfing, he loved traveling, and he made those things a regular part of his life. He made a point to do those things that he loved. And most people, I don't think, have made the time or the effort to figure out what it is that they're truly passionate about. My name is Jesse Ingram. When I met Janine for the first time, it was, it was honestly a breath of fresh air. In fact, our relationship began with adventure. Two weeks after having met each other, we ended up taking off on a trip to North Carolina to go mountain biking and whitewater rafting and hiking, all kinds of fun things. I definitely made Jesse meet my parents before leaving with him for a week, since I'd only knew him, I think, two weeks. <laughs> A typical day teaching, I would be at the school for nine hours easy, um, but I started to realize that maybe two hours of my time spent there was teaching. There was so much prep work and meetings. I found myself not being drawn to my job, to that career, like I'd hoped I would have as a kid, you know, becoming an adult and finding a career. It's something that you should want to do. I really started to dislike my job as a teacher um, and it made me feel like I'd done something wrong. Wasn't I supposed to be good at it? Wasn't I supposed to love it if that was something that I wanted to do? It's easy to do routine and not really think about the big things in life. Uh, back home in Florida, I never stopped to ask myself, am I happy? And I mean, like, am I truly happy? Am I enjoying the work that I do? Or am I making choices that are going to direct me into the future life that I am wishing to have? So what was missing in my life? I, I guess adventure, excitement, and travel. I think I'm the happiest on, uh, in the water, especially on a surfboard. The feel of the water, the sound of the waves, the wind, uh, nothing I've tried is as relaxing or as exciting as sitting on a piece of foam out in the ocean. The more I researched, the more it seemed like that we had been misled. You know, so, so here's all these people doing incredible things and, and many of them with little financial backing. Uh, so, like, why then did it seem so taboo for us to consider something similar? Most people work hard all their lives for a little bit of freedom at the end. And uh, it seemed like if we could instead just live simpler lifestyles now, we could have freedom for the rest of our lives. We quickly decided to give ourselves a deadline. We gave ourselves about two years and we said at the end of those two years we will have figured out how to either live in two places or travel constantly to chase the good weather. This first year as a nomad has been has been incredible. We we were able to spend the holidays with our families in Florida. We, we drove the length of Baja and spent the whole winter there. Um, this summer, we, we took part in RV Nomads, the movie, um, and just all of the people that we're meeting and the opportunities that we're coming across because of this lifestyle, on top of being able to travel and spend time together as a family, um, it's been 
more than I would have hoped for. Hey guys, thanks for watching. As Jenny mentioned, this is actually just a, a piece of a, of a school project I'm working on. The uh, full documentary is still in the works and that'll be coming out soon. For those of you that haven't heard, we've begun a new series called The Path to Full Time. In that, we're going to share all the things, all the tips and tricks and everything we learned as we became full-time travelers. And we're going, going to, to share that through this new series. We'd love for you to subscribe and please leave your comments down below and let us know what you think. <laughs>